there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Happy Easter, Passover, first full moon after the vernal equinox, whatever floats your particular boat. Take a last look, kids, at one of man's most curious creations. Today I'm going to re-review a pen that I received as a gift three Christmases ago and remains one of my top three fountain pens in my collection, and is what I regard as one of the most underrated gold nib fountain pens on the market. This is my beloved Pilot E95S with a 14 karat gold medium nib in champagne gold and burgundy. This was my first gold nib fountain pen, and this exceptional pen keeps flying under the radar of pens recommended as entry-level gold fountain pens. If you've been watching my channel at all in the last three years, you've seen this pen sitting on my desk every single time. Other pens come and go, but this pen has been consistently by my side as I've written with it at least once a week for the last three years. I'm trying to figure out why this pen isn't as popular or well-known as others, but one of the ways to give it the spotlight is to show it off once again and discuss its many virtues. Maybe you'll fall in love with it as I have. Let's find out right now. I'm going to cut in the unboxing I did three years ago. It was a bit unusual as the day the pen arrived my furnace died and I had technicians in the house installing a new one. So I was confined to my kitchen as my office was a construction site. And of course on the day that my furnace dies is the day that my pen has arrived. This is my Christmas present pen from my wife. Yes! Yay Amazon! So here's my box from Amazon. As I mentioned, so I got workmen going all over the house here. So that's what the background noise is. Here's the Pilot E95S fountain pen in burgundy ivory, medium. It was the last one. Slides out in this coffin box. There we go. Let's pull this part out. And there's the pen. Ooh, that capping mechanism is lovely. It becomes a full-size pen. So, and inside the box, there is a cartridge of ink and a use and care guide and I think that's it. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, instead of likes and dislikes, because you already know I love this pen, I'm going to make the case for why this is the most underrated gold nibbed pen in the current marketplace. And I want to look at some of the features of this pen with a view to understanding why I love it so much and why it might not get the attention I think it deserves. The Pilot Elite has a very long history in Japan, dating back to the 1960s. In my first review of this pen on January 11, 2020, I did a short history of the evolution of the Pilot Elite, and here is that clip right now. The Pilot Pen Corporation was founded by Ryosuke Numiki with Masayo Wada, in 1918 under the name of the Namiki Manufacturing Company. The name of the Pilot E95S derives from the word elite, and the 95th anniversary of the Pilot Pen Corporation in 2013, and the S stands for short. The E95S fountain pen was released by Pilot in 2014 in celebration of their 95th anniversary. And the design of the pen is based on the Pilot Elite fountain pen from 1975. The Elite fountain pen was a very popular series of pens in Japan from the late 60s on. The pen has the elegant, streamlined look of a classic 1960s fountain pen. When first introduced in the early 1960s, the Elite series of pens were very popular with those who liked short, pocket-sized design. Here is a short video of a Japanese commercial for the Elite that dates from a pilot ad campaign in 1969. In it, the actor, Kaiosen Ohashi, who was famous in Japan at the time, 
reads some advertising copy and pretends to be unhappy with it and adds his own ad lib, looking into the camera and saying, Hapa Fumi Fumi, you know what I mean, right? Well, no one knew what he meant by Hapa Fumi Fumi, but because Ohashi was a star, no one questioned him. <laughs> He continued to confidently use the phrase over and over in various Japanese media with everyone pretending they knew what he meant. The phrase became a popular Japanese catchphrase. The pen became popular as well. Now let's look at this pen. Overall, it is a small, pocket-sized pen. E95S is the North American designation of the Japanese pilot elite. If yours says elite on the cap rather than this E, then it was made in Japan for the Japanese market. If it has this stylized E on the cap, then it's an E95S, and it was made in Japan for the North American market. This one has a champagne gold, what some call ivory, colored cap and a burgundy colored plastic barrel and section. And the hardware is gold plated. It's also available in black with gold hardware. Just a short sidebar here. There is also a Pilot Elite that is not made in Japan and does not have a gold nib. That's the Pilot Elite from Korea. This is a very different animal. Pilot licensed a third-party Korean pen maker to make a copy of the Elite with a slightly thinner body and a much different steel nib. You can tell it's the Korean version because it doesn't say made in Japan on the back of the cap. As Pilot made thousands and thousands of the Elite over the years, you can find a lot of them used on eBay. Make sure you check that they have gold nibs. The newer ones from 95 on are 14 karat gold, whereas previous models were available with 18 karat gold nibs. And Pilot stamps the gold content on the nib. I did a video comparing the two versions, the Korean version and the Japanese version of the Elite on my channel, and you can see that video right here. From the top, we see a slightly domed finial separated from the cap by a gold ring. But look at the precision here. This isn't painted on. This is a metal ring, and it's tapered perfectly to match seamlessly. The cap is made of a light metal. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it certainly looks and feels like extruded anodized aluminum to me. It is long with a gentle curve and seems to have some sort of polyurethane lacquer applied to it. So you're actually not feeling the metal surface. So it isn't cold to the touch, but it's extremely silky and pleasant to hold. It also seems to be fairly scratch resistant and mark resistant as it looks flawless after a lot of use over the last two and a quarter years. The clip is the classic pilot shape and it's nicely springy and usable as it's on a spring hinge. At the bottom of the cap, we see the stylized E for Elite and a very 60s design with gold bands, which look like gold foil. And it says Pilot Japan on the back. Then there is a small step down to the barrel, which is very short and tapers to a flat bottom. The cap slips off in the most elegant and pleasing uncapping experience of any pen I've ever owned. The closest thing to this for me is the Parker 45. Here's a Parker 45. It has a slip cap mechanism very similar to the Elite, but it's actually not as silky as the Elite is. And this is a Schaefer Targa from the 1970s, and its slip cap feels very similar, the, the silky kind of a feel, uh, but then it clicks at the end. If we look inside the cap, we see the plastic cap seal and the slip clutch mechanism. The section is long and elegantly tapered down to the semi, quasi, almost inlaid like 14 karat gold pilot nib. I couch my statement here because if I said it was an inlaid nib, I would be inundated with comments about how I was wrong by people who never get inlaid themselves. Hey everybody, we're all gonna get laid. I've been told that none of these nibs are inlaid nibs. The Schaefer Targa, the Water McCarran, and the Pilot E95S. I actually don't give a shit what you call them. They're all gorgeous. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It's engraved with 14K 585 Pilot Angle Brackets M for medium, 
Japan and, and a date code which says 1218. And the E95S is available in extra fine, fine and medium. What's that you say? Japan makes an extra fine nib? No! Oh my god, someone's wrong on the internet. And it has a plastic feed. The section unscrews to reveal the pilot cartridge that I emptied of its boring pilot blue ink. And while it was filled originally with a Roshizuku Yamabuto to be all matchy matchy with the color of the pen, I replaced that ink very quickly with my favorite blue ink, a Roshizuku Konpeki, almost immediately. That was because I love writing with this pen so much and so often that it had to be a blue because I don't write with reddish inks that often. This pen has not been without Konpeki in it since January 2020 and it sits right here on my desk in my 3D printed pen holder so I can grab it almost every day. That's what she said. Although the pen will accept the Pilot Con 40 converter, it is pointless to me because you can't see the ink level when the converter is placed in the pen. And the Con 40 takes a lot less ink than the one milliliter capacity of the Pilot cartridge. So I syringe fill this cartridge when it gets empty. This is the very cartridge that came with the pen, so they endure for at least two years without leaking or issues. I'm careful to remove that little plastic disc that's at the top of that cartridge, however, as they can flop over and block ink flow. That happened on my wife's Pilot Decimo, and removing the disc solved her issue of the pen drying out between uses. Unposted, this pen is almost unusable, as it's so short. But of course, the pen was designed to be posted, and this is where the magic happens. The pen becomes a regular sized fountain pen when posted. It's very light and very balanced and very, very comfortable in the hand. The section is long and tapered and almost any grip will find a place that's comfortable on this pen. The Pilot E95S is available at most online pen retailers in North America for around $135 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Pilot E95S with some other Pilots. A Pilot Metropolitan, a Pilot Custom 74, a Pilot Decimo, and a Pilot Falcon. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. These are all gold nib pens except for the Metro of course. And the Decimo is a retractable pen. Now let's look at some other brands posted. And here we are with some other brands. This is the Waterman Curren. This is a 1970s Schaefer Targa. This is a 1950s Parker 51. And this is a 1970s Parker 45. What's remarkable is how the Pilot E95S is right there with these other classic gold nib fountain pens. It's actually bigger than the posted Parker 45. And yet the Pilot E95S is considered a pocket pen. It's also remarkable that these pen companies really knew how to post pens. Look at this. That Targa posts magnificently. And of course the Parker 51 and especially the 45 are champion posters. Slim, balanced, beautiful. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the E95S Pilot. And it has a 14 karat gold medium nib. And checking the wetness on this pen, it's beautifully wet, wonderfully wet, juicy, and smooth. Smooth like butter, smooth pen. If you don't like an extremely smooth, light pen, this one might not be for you. And the ink is Iroshizuku Konpeki. This is my go-to ink in any modern pen. 
If I ever suspect a pen is having ink flow issues, I'll replace the ink with Conpecky because I know it behaves so very nicely and is a nice wet flowing ink. For vintage pens, I would stick with Waterman Mysterious Blue or Serenity Blue as they are relatively pH neutral for pens with rubber sacks. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, you can squeeze out a little as there is some nice bounce to this beautiful nib. The pen makes a 0 0.6 millimeter line, which is a Western medium or a Japanese, just slightly broader than medium. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's a bit scratchier and very, very dry. And some quick writing. No issues at all. That's me skipping on the page. Very, very nice. Okay, what do I love about this pen since you already know that I love it? And why do I feel it's the most underrated gold nib fountain pen on the market? There are a lot of videos out there promoting various pens as the top entry level gold fountain pen. Top five, top 10. Many of them never mention this pen. The Pilot Custom 74 is always mentioned, as is the Lamy 2000. Kudos to Brian Goulet for updating his list in December 2021 to include the Pilot E95S first in his list. He had it as a runner-up in his previous top five list video, but most people ignore it. In fact, Figboot listed 10 pens as the top choices for entry-level gold nib pens, and the E95S was not mentioned although five of his top pen choices were from Pilot, and all 10 of those pens were more expensive than the E95S, which is the least expensive non-Chinese gold nib pen out there. So I don't get how it can be ignored, but the one reason I think it's ignored is the size. If you looked at the pen this way, it's a big pen, but normally when you look at it on a website or in the store, it looks like this. And people say, oh, that's a pocket pen. I'm not into small pocket pens. So no, this is not a Caveco Sport. It might get grouped with the tiny Caveco Sport, but when it's posted, it's clearly in a whole different category. The Pilot is a full inch longer than the Sport. But what makes this pen great and still one of my top three pens in my collection is the silky feel, the balance, the gorgeous looks, comfortable grip, and most of all, how this pen writes and writes and writes on the page. It's easily the smoothest nib I own. That means that this Leonardo Memento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks has not displaced my Pilot E95S on my top three fountain pens list. And the Pilot E95S is a full $500 less than the Leo. The pen certainly does have a couple of things that might be non-starters for people. The pen is very light at only 15 grams but the Caveco Sport is only 13 grams with a clip, and the Lamy Safari is only a gram heavier. The other issue is the Pilot Con 40 converter. But as I've shown, using the Pilot cartridge gets you a full milliliter of ink, and you can see your ink levels. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.
try this. 